Hey guys, this is Matt Kaur from controlpaint.com, and today let's sketch some apples. Now before we get started, if you saw the previous video, you know that I was using very basic tools, and that I was creating these quick gesture sketches, starting with line, and then adding a little bit of tone. Well today we're going to be using similar tools, and we're going to be using similar subject matter, very basic still life, but I'm going to take a totally different approach. So this time, my goal is going to be to start with tone, and then refine with line a little bit later. So as you see me start blocking in this apple here, I'm making the biggest strokes I can think of to describe the shape. And the way I like to do this generally is using this side of the charcoal. I add a lot of pigment and then quickly switch to the kneaded eraser and start kind of pulling it away. But in working this way, it allows me to define a large area of tone first but then I'm really adding the nuance and the detail with the eraser. I'm sort of removing my way and sculpting away to get to the final image I want to make. And I think for beginners especially, this is not obvious. If you think of adding details, well, you think of adding pigment. Well, what I'm doing here is a little different. I'm adding a bunch of pigment, but then I'm getting details by removing it away. I'm sculpting with the eraser. And as I did in the last video, I'm using tools that I created for the Digital Sketching Starter Kit. So if you actually want these specific tools to do the similar exercise, I definitely encourage you to check that series out. But more than trying to capture the look of traditional media, they're trying to capture the problem solving of traditional media. For instance, the fact that I'm using the eraser here to add definition is not something that might be obvious to you if you've only ever used Photoshop. But if you were in art school with me and you were drawing uh, charcoal still lifes, using the eraser was essential. It was one of the two tools you had. And I think what that teaches you is to really work within limitations, to get a lot out of very simple tools. And it also just has a certain lightness to it. It's easier to be dynamic when you have fewer tools to work with. There's just fewer choices. Now, on this one you see me working with, I actually am knocking in a few contour lines first. Pretty quickly here, I'm going to switch to using the side of the charcoal and bringing in tone. But in this case, I did want to have a little bit more of a framework before I started really adding in those lights and shadows. Now, when you look at the apple from the side here, it's uh, sort of a problem-solving exercise to decide what I want to be light and what I want to be dark. It's obvious if you have a flat colored object, the dark is going to be the shadow and the white of the page is going to be the highlight. But here I'm actually using light and dark to describe the patterning on the apple. Yes, there is some shadow on the apple, but in this case, the light-dark contrast is actually much more pronounced on the red and the yellow areas. And once again, I'm getting that detail from the eraser. The big bold statement comes from the side of the charcoal, and then quickly I start refining and cutting away and sculpting away with the small controlled eraser. And in doing so, I get a wider range of value than the single color that I'm using. Because just like last time, I'm not changing the color on the brush for the entire image. It's one shade of gray. Where I get this range of values is from how I use the eraser. And I think this is a technique that is essential to practice. You'll also see that I'm using temp layers, just like I do in many images. And that allows me to make these big strokes that go further than I need them to, and then I'm able to carve away with that eraser. And then here in this last one, just like with the coffee cups, I have a higher angle. So this is just to kind of mix things up. I am starting pretty immediately with the big wide brush. This is that charcoal side. So you can see here, it's a really crude light and dark pattern. I'm trying to get that gesture, that sense of the image as quickly as possible before I really kind of start with those specific details. And here, once again, the control and the clarity is because of the eraser. I made big marks with the pigment, and then that's it. Now I'm switching to the eraser, and I'm really refining those edges. And I'm sort of clarifying where the light is and where the shadow is. And it's all subtractive. I feel like painting as a process has a lot more additive work. You're applying pigment over top of other pigment. But drawing is unique in that... I would say it's 50-50. You spend just as much time applying pigment as you do erasing pigment. 
So it might not be easy or automatic at first, but once you practice this, you'll really get the hang of it. So I encourage you to get out there and to do some basic sketching. And you know what? Apples are a great place to start. So have fun sketching, and thanks for coming to the site, guys.